this man killed her. He put it in his notebook. When they found his body, he had uh, the notebook saying, I killed her. I had a reliever of her pain. So, you know, unfortunately, you can't look at this situation without some hindsight. Okay, because ultimately, this man was a monster and he killed her. A newly released photo taken by Gabby Petito herself appears to show injuries on her face in the days before she was strangled to death. Is there something on your cheek here? Looks like, did, did you get, did you get hit in the face? Um, kind of looks like something like hit you in the face. And then over on your arm, your shoulder, right here. The photo was taken at 4.37 p.m. on August 12, 2021, just minutes before a 911 call that led up to this traffic stop. So there's two people that came to us and told us that they saw him hit you. There's two people saying that they saw him punch you. We're just independent witnesses by Moonflower. Well, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. The law firm representing Petito's parents released the photo on Monday saying, quote, Gabby documented the injury and, during the stop, attempted to tell the Moab officers. However, the seriousness and significance of this type of injury was completely ignored. Where did he hit you? Don't, don't worry, just well, be honest. He, like, grabbed my face, like, like this. Uh -huh. um, he didn't, like, hit me in the face. Like, he didn't, like, punch me in the face or anything. Did he slap but, your face or what? Well, like, he, like, grabbed me. Brett Ward, a family practice attorney with a specialty in domestic violence, says there may be a few reasons why the photo was released when it was. One, the lawsuit uh, where the, her parents are suing the police department um, uh, came out about three months ago. And I imagine there's probably some uh, uh, pre-trial proceedings that are going on there. And this is an effort to both uh, sway the uh, public opinion on the issue and probably influence any potential jury and the uh, you know, judge involved. Also, the Utah Senate just passed a bill um, uh, that's going to require a different type of domestic violence assessment about eight days ago. And Gabby's parents were a big proponent of this. Petito's parents, Joe Petito and Nicole Schmidt, have filed suit against the Moab Police Department, alleging officers ignored crucial evidence in the case and did not follow up with an investigation. And what these photos, uh, they believe, show is that there was some sort of strangulation that occurred before the police got there and there was proof in the form of blood on her nose and her cheekbone and her forehead, which made it look like someone had put their hand over her head and blocked her nose. The lawsuit also argues police incorrectly labeled Petito as the aggressor in the situation. Once someone resorts to that type of violence, one, it basically creates a new level of who's the primary aggressor. So no longer are these two people who kind of had a, you know, pity pat, stay away from me, push, push, fight, but that someone went to the step of blocking someone's, you know, airway. And, uh, you know, two, the risk of someone being murdered by their uh, intimate partner after an act of strangulation occurs goes up like 700 fold. So that's why this is all very important. At the time of the traffic stop, Petito and her fiance, Brian Laundry were on a cross country road trip. They documented their journey on social media. So me and Brian just got up and got ready, made the bed in the tent, set up. Um, I think our plan for today is to just hang out here in the tent. Um, Brian's stretching, doing some morning yoga. Petito's case gained national attention when her family reported her missing in September 2021. At the time, they told authorities they had last heard from her via text in late August. Hello, hello, and good morning. It is really nice and sunny today. It's only 10 o'clock in the morning, um, but it rained all afternoon yesterday. Laundry returned to his family's home in Florida without Petito on September 1st. Laundry was named a person of interest in the case on September 15th, and by September 17th, 
Laundrie's parents had reported him missing. Days later, a shocking discovery. Now we begin with a story gripping the nation. A once missing Gabby Petito's remains have been found. Her death ruled a homicide. Petito's remains were found in Grand Teton National Park. Her cause of death was determined to be strangulation. In late September, a federal warrant was issued for Laundrie's arrest, but on October 20th, his remains were discovered in a Florida reserve. Officials determined he died by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Nearby, officials found a notebook in which Laundrie admitted to Petito's murder, writing, quote, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful, that it is what she wanted, but I see now all the mistakes I made. It's clear that this was a very disturbed man and the police gave him a pass. Whether that was right or wrong, that's what happened. This man killed her. He put it in his notebook. When they found his body, he had uh, the notebook saying, I killed her. I had to relieve her of her pain. So, you know, unfortunately, you can't look at this situation without some hindsight. OK, because ultimately this man was a monster and he killed him. Days before Petito went missing, 911 callers reported seeing Laundrie hit her while in Moab, Utah. That's when this body camera footage was taken. Is there something on your cheek here? Looks like, did, did, you, get, did you get hit in the face? Um, kind of looks like something like hit you in the face. And then over on your arm, shoulder, right here. There's, that's new, huh? It's kind of a new mark. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Can I see the other side of your face? So, what happened here and here? Um, I, I'm not sure. It was a... First I was trying to get in the back of the car and his backpack was on the back. Got so, the backpack gotcha? The complaint was that he was hitting her. And what I think one of the problems here is, and this is about training, and, and, and the whole issue here is how we train law enforcement, how we train, train the attorneys, how we train judges on issues of domestic violence, that they will come, across, come up upon a scene and often a victim will say, nothing happened, it's fine, or it was my fault, it was my fault. They're not admitting to something. What they're trying to do, all right, is protect the batterer. And that can be part of their safety planning. For all she knew, if she said, this guy had strangled me, and the police would have said, okay, lady, but you know, we'll arrest him, he'll get out of jail. And then he, she's got to go home with him or go up into the mountains with him. You know, and, and that's when you have people who aren't in this situation, but in their home, and this is the father of their children, or this is their primary mode of economic support, victims of uh, you know, interspousal violence or intimate partner violence often part of their safety planning is not to reveal the truth of the situation. An officer should have been looking at that in that situation. You had a complaint that they saw him hitting her and you come upon her and she has blood and a puffy eye. I think the assessment should have been what happened with their eyes and not what she said in that moment. But while callers reported laundry hit Petito, she told police she struck laundry first. So you push her and she hit you? She was it. I wasn't, I, I, it wasn't like a push and she jumped on me, she was, she was already, she was already, I don't want to, swing. she was already swinging and I was pushing. Yeah. A lot of angles, a lot of nails, a lot of rings. Yeah. And um, I think when you look at the body cam video, which was re released a long time ago, you know, Gabby takes some responsibility for her behavior. He has cuts on his face and his neck. She has cuts on her face. Yeah. Did he... Did he hit you though? I mean, I mean, it's okay if you're saying you hit him, and then I, I understand if he hit you, but we want to know the truth if he actually hit you. Because oh, you know, I guess, yeah, but I can first. Her statements seem to indicate that she was the one who started the physicality. Okay, but when you have a situation like that, that someone gives a little push, the other person can't punch them in the face and knock them out and say, "Well, she started it." That's not how that works. What this is saying is that whatever you think who started it and you know who was the initial uh, initiator of the physicality he took it to a level that made it a severe crime and that that is the reason he is the primary aggressor in this situation that in making your safety assessment the person who was at risk was her that they should have protected her and in the end they mislabeled who was the one who was the problem here and didn't take action that they should have taken to protect her life. 
Ward says he believes officers should have arrested Brian Laundrie. You know, she was clearly very shaken. She was crying. At that moment, based on the complaint and her injuries, I think he should have been arrested. At the end of the day, if it turns out she was the primary aggressor or she decided not to go forward with charges, great. But at that moment that they would, you know, be camping together the next day when there were marks and blood and a complaint, uh, you know, uh, to me, that was the error. I think that the officer should have made some sort of arrest. I mean, even if they were wrong and they detained her, all right, and got her somewhere safe where she could have told the story without him being 20 feet away and knowing that maybe, you know, call her parents and, you know, have her parents fly out and be there for her, that she knows she wasn't about to get in a van with this guy. That is the kind of safety assessment that should have been made. It just makes me upset. I know that he definitely gets frustrated with me a lot because I have a lot of anxiety and he definitely has anxiety too. Well, that could be a bad combo if you both have anxiety. There was, if you look at the uh, uh, um, body cam uh, 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 video, one of the police officers saying, well, I, my ex-wife and I, we would trigger each other and it would escalate. You know, my girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend's really, really calm and she has a way of taking my anxiety and bringing it down. But my ex-wife, that's why she's my ex-wife. I'm just sharing, <laughs> I know it's a little personal, but to help you understand, we would feed off each other's anxiety and it would spiral. You know what I mean? And it doesn't matter how much I loved her. It may be a bad for your soul, just saying. You know, that's not helpful. It really wasn't. You now wonder, is he biased? All right, was he was he putting uh, 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 this gentleman in the role of him and, and, and being sympathetic to him that, oh, my wife used to do this to me and I used to act and I was justified, so you were justified. As for the Petito Schmidt family's case against the Moab Police Department, Ward believes it could be a strong one. And this is a very sympathetic people, two people who um, lost a daughter, that there was a, a complaint that this man hit her, the police stopped, saw injuries on her, and basically threw her to the lion's den, back to this guy, and then he finished the job. That is a very, very compelling theme that they could put forward. So they could absolutely win this case. And, he, and they're going to have an expert who's going to come in and say, when you see these injuries, you know that he tried to block her airway. And when he tried to block her airway, you need to know as a police officer, that case closed, arrest him. This is aggravated assault put him in the wagon, get him to the police station, question him, get her to a separate place, question her, and, uh, you know, basically try to prevent the risk that he'll do that again and, and succeed. And that's the, you know, thrust of it. So those photos are extremely important and, you know, incredibly bolster uh, Gabby's parents' case against the police department. In addition to the Moab Police Department's lawsuit, Petito's parents also filed suit against Laundrie's parents. It is not simply about the silence of Christopher and Roberta, uh, Roberta Laundrie, who knew that their son had brutally murdered Gabby Petito. It's not simply about their callous refusal, despite pleas from the Petito family, to speak up about whether or not Gabby was alive and if she wasn't where her body was located. It's about a course of conduct that they committed from the moment they learned on August 28th of 2021 that their son had brutally murdered uh, Gabby Petito up until the time that her body was found. Ward says the newly released photo may help in that lawsuit as well. You know, I don't know what defenses they're going to offer um, uh, in the um, their lawsuit if they were to uh, defend that my son's a good boy, he never could have done this, then yeah, those photos could be relevant. In the end, Ward says he hopes Petito's case can shed light on domestic violence awareness. Unfortunately, sometimes it takes victims like Gabby to force education upon all of us. And I have to say that we need so much more. And there, I hope that legislatures across the country look at a situation like this and are motivated to try to prevent these situations by putting money into training from people and the entire system. Last week, Petito's mother was in Utah to support the passage of a law that would require more training and procedures in domestic violence situations. She maintains Gabby Petito would still be alive had Moab police officers responded appropriately. Reporting for Law and Crime Network, I'm Sierra Gillespie.